Asia PayPal. A big round of applause to our panel, please. different geographical locations. We have China representing uh, Taiwan and Singapore as well. So just to get a context on everybody, I want every, I would like everybody to introduce themselves. Why don't you go ahead? Thanks, Jen. Uh, my name is Oliver. I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of this uh, company called uh, vSense. Uh, you can think of vSense as a uh, Shazam equivalent for e-commerce database search, uh, except we use uh, images instead of uh, meta keywords. So we've been um, um, almost three years, uh, started this company about three years ago, uh, spun off from the National University of Singapore, and it's been a tremendous uh, ride since. So we are venture back uh, by a couple of investors, including uh, Rakuten Ventures. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Turoha Squad. I go by T, it's a lot easier. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called Travel Mall. Um, we are a marketplace for vacation rentals. Uh, we are also part of a, uh, a company called Home Away now. Uh, Travel Mall was acquired by Home Away about two years ago. Home Away, Home Away is considered the largest uh, vacation rental site in the world. Uh, my background is I, I've been a a two-time entrepreneur. My first one was out of Silicon Valley. I sold it to Yahoo. The second one, Travel Mob, I was fortunate enough to sell it to Home Away as well. Uh, but prior to that, I was running Skype for Asia. I was running uh, the mobile division for Yahoo for Southeast Asia as well. So I've been in the internet industry for close to 20 years. Uh, that's kind of how old I am. It's scary. Yeah, hi there, my name is uh, Hamish Malay and I look after merchant services for, uh, for PayPal Braintree. So essentially everything to do with uh, sell, you know, merchants and their selling and their payment methods they use. So um, we look after the, the right solutions for them as well as sales. Uh, I've been with eBay Inc for about uh, five years. I worked in the uh, marketplaces business in Australia for a long time. So I've got a deep background in marketplaces and um, and I've recently moved over to the PayPal side of the business. Very excited about the opportunity in Asia, actually, and, and PayPal's new vision around building um, an operate, you know, payments operating platform that's kind of agnostic to payment method. And, and the, the, the uh, opportunity that it has across the whole of Asia is just huge, so it's, uh, it's a very exciting time for us. Good afternoon. Uh, my, name, my name is James. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Wu Tuan, or Wu War. Uh, we just uh, went public on Nasdaq about two months ago. Um, I'm also co-founder and CEO of a company called Jet Bay. Uh, at the moment, we believe that with the supplier base we have, we are the world's largest inbound travel research and booking site for China. So I'm a big passion person. And I truly believe this is such an exciting time for e-commerce. So actually, just to get some more depth information about you, what actually is your passion? What was what made it think that you wanted to get into this type of field in e-commerce and what you do now? What's your passion? Sure. Um, well, we didn't really start up, uh, at least for me, we didn't really start up uh, focusing on e-commerce, uh, you know, exactly. It was, uh, it was a solution that was being developed and, uh, you know, when we looked at uh, what are the pain points and where are the problems that we're trying to solve, uh, e-commerce came up uh, as the most natural uh, way of uh, solving that problem. Okay, and that's um, got to do with uh, search experience, browser experience, and discovery experience. I mean, you know, how difficult it is to find a uh, piece of uh, clothing, all right, uh, using keywords on an e-commerce website today. And I bet you, okay, <laughs> we did a very simple experiment with a simple dress. Um, you know, on some of the prominent sites, uh, it took them a heck of a long time, okay? And, um, you know, with image, we could literally find it in seconds. So, 
Um, so why I keep, we came into this area and where, how I foresaw the problem over here, it's uh, partly because we were you know, very much driven by uh, solving pain points. Uh, so today we work very well with uh, e-commerce uh, uh, websites as well as uh, marketplaces. Uh, so this is what we've been doing since. And T? You know, I, I, I was very uh, impressed and I was um, taken back by this whole concept of the sharing economy. Some call it collaborative consumption. But essentially it is um, an empowerment of the people. Right? It is a moving from corporate to individuals, um, uh, from structured to unstructured. Uh, that part of the whole concept of the sharing economy excites me. And I do believe that it is the next generation of where e-commerce is really uh, evolving into. Um, it is, in a way, how eBay started, right? The ability for putting buyers and sellers together. But sharing economy takes that a little further by saying, well, I have assets, I have services that, can, that, that I can offer. Why can I put that in a marketplace and I'll, allow me to help you find my supplier or my demand? Um, and I, you know, there were companies like um, Uber, for example, which is based on sharing economy, TaskRabbit, of course, companies like Airbnb and HomeAway, those are the pioneer of, 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 of this uh, of, of what, we're, what I was looking into. And I realized that back in Asia, you know, uh, there were not too many players in that field. We're probably number six or number seven company that kind of came out with that. So we're not the earliest and we're not the last. Uh, but I guess it boils down to a little bit of execution and, and you know, move faster than the rest to kind of get there. But that's how things started. Yeah, so um, I'm with you T. I, I, I started at eBay and um, the main reason was because I saw it as a real disruptive business model, right? And it was enabling small uh, players, entrepreneurs, small businesses to actually access a market that they couldn't before. And um, frankly, I was thinking to myself at the time, you know, and I was a bit passionate about this, the big business taking the world and how, how, how do we enable others to, to participate? And, um, and so that was my original, my original, you know, uh, motivation for, for getting involved. Um, I think now I've got a real appreciation also for um, the payment space and how at, at times inefficient and you know, how hard it is to move and manage money. Uh, particularly now we're so global and, this, and, and, you know, and Asia is this great example of how we, all of these transactions are cross-border, moving money through currencies and cross-borders and, um, and equally starting to create financial inclusion for people in you know, Indonesia and Philippines and these, in these countries. Um, we have an opportunity at PayPal to actually help make that happen. And, and so it's, I'm kind of re really passionate about that side of our business and what it, what it does for individuals. So for us, uh, I think I want to echo what uh, T said about execution. So for our business, for 55 itself, it's, not, it's nothing new, it's daily deals. Or back then it was daily deals and it was about five years ago. But uh, you see something, you want to execute it fast. And that's pretty much what we do. We have a concept called C2C, copy to China. So that's what we did. We transplanted something from overseas into China itself. And of course, we are increasingly seeing a lot of these, uh, not just in China, but overseas, where we see someone doing something successfully in the Silicon Valley or somewhere and bring it over to our part of the world where we understand it a little bit better. So it sounds like there's a bit of passion and a bit of pain Obviously, with e-commerce, there's, there's a lot of pain, but a lot of growth as well. Can I ask you each what is the most painful part of what you're doing right now? And, and also, on the upside, what's, what, what do you see as the growth potential for your specific sectors? Well, uh, most painful points. Um, that's I a mean, also, this could be an idea for the future entrepreneurs in here as well. Right? Sure, so, sure. Well, I mean, um, you know, for us, it's innovation. Um, you know, we've, um, we're literally, you know, one of the first, if not the first, to introduce uh, image-driven e-commerce uh, experience into uh, Southeast Asia as well as uh, the region as a whole. Um, so pain points, obviously, when, you know, you come up with something that's new, that's innovation, there's always that innovation curve um, that you have to push, and uh, you push a lot harder than... Uh, in some markets than the other. Uh, so it's very natural um, because uh, there will be a lot of players that may not want to be the first to be the guinea pig, okay, so to speak, all right? 
Uh, but having said that, um, you know, um, once we've uh, been able to cross through the initial pain points, and that's where, you know, uh, one success leads to another, okay, but there's, because there's reference points, there's uh, proof points, and there's learning points that can be uh, made. So I, I give an example. I mean, uh, you know, my first customer was actually not in, uh, not in Singapore, ironically, okay, although I'm here based here in Singapore itself. My first customers were from uh, Taiwan and in Japan itself. Um, so a lot of people ask me who are my customers here in Singapore. I, I, well, I mean, you know, I don't have any, okay? <laughs> right? That's uh, the honest truth of the matter. And, um, you know, uh, but by no means is that uh, an impediment to me to grow further. Um, so innovation takes its time. Um, it's got to be smart about it and uh, push, uh, you know, it just goes through, you know, that curve that you need to just push through very uh, quickly but smartly. And T? So, so there are a lot of challenges, but maybe I'll give an example where we encountered a challenge and then we found what I thought was a creative way to solve it. Still not completely solved, but it's definitely an approach that we took. So when we enter Indonesia, we're, we're now basically in all, all across Asia, right? From Japan to Australia to India and everything in between. Um, so when we first enter Indonesia, um, first of all, it is a huge market. Right? Everyone assumes this is the next China, the next India out of Southeast Asia is Indonesia. But there is a lot of problems with payments um, and the fact that, look, the internet speed, the broadband and mobile is about four and a half times slower than Singapore. Right? So, and sometimes network can be quite, you know, uh, picky. Um, so payment was an issue. Finding online customer travelers is, is, was, a, was a challenge. So what we did was we formed partnership with an offline player. We formed a partnership with this, the largest offline travel agency that's been around in Indonesia for 48 years, three generations now running it. And basically, we upsell our properties, our vacation rentals, through their offline agencies. They have 48 branches across Indonesia. And now, if you stop by any of these branch, you can pay in cash booking a vacation rental with an offline travel agency. You know, uh, travel in Indonesia, about 75% of the business is still done offline. While the 25%, you know, I'll be growing fast, but the majority of the business is still offline. So what we did was, we thought was creative, is to form a online to offline type of partnership, receive cash payment, no credit cards, and we're able to tap into 75% of the travel market in Indonesia. So you kind of did it the Asian way. I see that becoming the Asianized way of doing e-commerce or any any specific tool in Asia. Absolutely, to I think. Sure, yeah. yeah, traditional. It, yeah, part of the you know what James said about execution. You know, it, it is about you know not taking a global platform and try to feed it into every single local market out there. Southeast Asia is not one. It's, it's not one market. Is consists of multiple different markets, multiple cultures, languages, currencies, and whatnot, right? So different do people ways of doing pay business. at these branches all, of, all across, of, say, Indonesia? Oh, yeah. So yeah. what does PayPal have to do with, say, about that? Well, you know, th you know th this is a space we want to be in as well. Uh, um, and I think... Do they use PayPal at these different branches, or is it...? No, they, they have credit cards. They they don't, I don't think they credit. take PayPal. We support PayPal. Ah, okay. Your, your right. rates are way too high for us, but we'll talk about that separately. <laughs> we, we, we are talking. But that must be a challenge for you as we're doing Asianized e-commerce, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to look, um, and, you know, I had this discussion today with someone about the partnerships that we're going to need to form throughout Asia in order to do this. I don't think PayPal can do it alone. Um, and, and when you say, what, you know, what, do, you, what do you find painful? Um, there's a couple of things as being a part of a big organisation. One is... The, the upside is the amount of capital you have and money you might have to spend. Uh, the downside is the speed at which you can move, and I think that's a lesson for the entrepreneurs, which is you can move fast and you can solve people's problems I I quicker. Um, and so we're looking at how do we work with some of these you know, companies that can solve pain points quickly that we can't move so quickly to do, and then, and then work together to say, look, we've got the scale and capital and access to things we, that you need, and, and together we can actually create solutions throughout Asia. So we're certainly not looking at doing this by ourselves. Right, we were just talking in the 
in the back about how one of your major strategies is that you just work with a lot of partnerships, specifically uh, marketplaces and, and whatnot. So you do kind of have your own strategy of addressing it as well. Yeah, so um, our, our traditional partners have been marketplaces. Obviously, eBay was the biggest of those. We're, and you know, effectively, eBay outsourced their payment operations to PayPal and said, if you can sort out this problem for us, it's, it's a business for you. And, and we obviously made a good business out of it. And, um, and you know, we, we're still working with marketplace partners. And, and obviously, if we split from eBay, we can do that more, more as well. Um, but equally, we're working with you know, shopping cart providers and pre-integrating our solutions and, and working with other channel sales partners that can help us. Uh, but I think more and more now we need to really, particularly in Southeast Asia, look at this last mile problem and, and how do people actually, you know, they can get paid into their PayPal account, but how do they get it out? What do they use it for? Does it need to be cash? Can it be a card? Um, so it's a, the, these things, you know, and, the, and the, the, the penetration of bank accounts in some of these countries is still very low. So. So these are the challenges we have as, as an organisation, not just as an organisation, I think as a, as a collective is how quickly will that evolve, how quickly will that change and, and, and how can you be in the right place at the right time to take, you know, to, 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 or, or even influence it yourself. No, we're glad to have people like you so we don't have to worry about payment. <laughs> So you could deal with that. We could just deal with all the regulators as well. That's a whole other ball game. So. But there is that issue about the fees. It'd be nice to have it as low. So just to jump into, um, it's been said that, that it, Southeast Asia is five years behind um, China. And we have a lot of Chinese panelists or people who have businesses in China. James, maybe, can you tell us, like, do you think China is a crystal ball for, for Southeast Asia? Is there any learnings? I mean, it grows so fast. Is there something, since we're a room full of Southeast Asians, that okay. we can learn uh, from? So maybe this question, and just to extend on what the guys have been saying, so the pinpoints and so on, and then I'll lead into crystal ball. So 10 years, uh, I think my biggest problem right now is regulators not delivering on their promises. So 10 years ago, we, I, I was working very closely with MasterCard and so on, and uh, we were talking about ASEAN Pay which was pretty much going to be something that's big and to you know become another JCB or another MasterCard Visa, even China Union Pay. And 10 years ago, China Union Pay was nowhere. It was, it was still small and upcoming. But 10 years later, look at where we are today. We have uh, China Union Pay, which is pretty much everywhere. ASEAN Pay is, what the hell is ASEAN Pay? It's nowhere. And that results in a lot of problems downstream because then we have e-commerce, which can't put their act, you know, we can't really collect payments that efficiently. And we have um, international com competitors coming in, like PayPal, when we could have gotten the act together ourselves 10 years ago. So is China a crystal ball? Yes, today it is a crystal ball. If I were to go back 10 years in time and just look at, you know, place my bets, I would have gone to China rather than go to Indonesia, for example. I would still, increase, I would still look at Silicon Valley as the place to go to for new ideas. But in terms of execution and variations on top of an existing model, for example, variations on top of Uber, like what Titi and Kwaiti Dacha have done, China is a place to, to see all these variations being done. Sharon, China, you're also, I know you're from China, but you don't have business in China. Do you have anything to add? Do you we, we do have clients in China, and uh, I, I just want to echo some of the points that James have made, and um, you know, whether China is a crystal ball for Southeast Asia. Um, whether crystal ball or not, um, you know, I see China uh, being a place where Southeast Asia can take a lot of reference points from, okay, as well as learning points. Uh, the kind of massive investments that uh, we are seeing in China today uh, is leading up to a lot of uh, new innovations as well as uh, new features and experimentations over there. I mean, uh, I'm not sure, you know, um, whether some of you have heard, you know, there was uh, Jack Ma just about in March in one of a mobile conference in Europe. And uh, amongst all things, he was demonstrating, um, you know, um, the first ever uh, facial recognition authentication for mobile payments. Now, how's that for China? Okay. Now, this this amazing. And, uh, you know, for uh, a big company like that um, to say, hey, you know, I'm experimenting with that. It's in beta, of course. Okay. Um, but some of the cool stuff that they're doing. And um, today in China, I mean, I'm just reading a report the other day on the uh, Global Web Index. Um, WeChat mobile users are the most active 
online shoppers in the world today. 67% of WeChat users are mobile shoppers. And then the second, that's uh, Sina Weipo at 59%. Now, two of the top guys in China okay, are leading okay, the game in so far as mobile uh, consumer uh, experience is concerned. The numbers okay, are there. So really, I mean, China is uh, it's a good place. So, so echo uh, James' point, maybe if it's 10 years ago, I would have placed my bets earlier in China as well. So we were actually talking about marketplaces. I mean, there, for people from the econ business, we understand the difference between marketplaces and e-tailing. What's weird is evolution started, we started from marketplaces, and then we went to e-tail, and then now, there's a recent surge of marketplaces again, whether it be marketplaces, apps, et cetera, et cetera. I think T had some color to add on this. What do you think? I, I think I'm a big fan of marketplaces. Obvi right? Obviously. I think, <laughs> as you can Come tell. On. <laughs> it is, it is uh, it, you know, first of all, it's in the space that we're in. It, it doesn't um, take a lot of investment. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's no warehouse per se. There's no logistics that, that we have to deal with. What we're doing is we're playing a pure middleman play to help transactions occur on our side. To make sure that the buyer and the supplier kind of meet one another and make sure that we sort of help securely transact that. I, I think we can continue to see that happening in Asia because it's a fast ramp up. Uh, you may not uh, have the kind of investments that you know our counterparts would get out of Silicon Valley or China or India, where you know valuations are a lot higher and you know VCs are just piling money into it. Uh, but I think for Southeast Asia, we're still not exactly there just yet. Um, I think that's why I think you see a natural uh, attraction to building out marketplaces because of that. I think it's easier to ramp up. But Coming from e-commerce, I, I understand the pain of lead generation and, and, well, not pain, just challenge of lead generation and competitors buying keywords that are brand names, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let me talk you about it. Let me tell you this story. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> our competitors are driving up our brand keywords. We were paying five cents a click to Google about a year and a half ago. Now, our competitors are driving up the price to $27, $28 a click. From five cents to twenty-eight dollars, that means your acquisition of your customers have just grown a lot more, a lot, lot more. And you know, if you don't optimize your funnel in terms of you know getting from uh, visitors all the way down to actual payment, you know, you're gonna have a much more expensive business to deal with. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really depends on what business you're in. So the type of business that we're in, we're not seeing any more competitors coming up. If they are, they are probably making the biggest mistake of their life because they're not going to be able to afford this. Um, and, and, but there are other marketplaces out there where you know, they may not rely wholly on, on SEM play or Google. I mean, content right now is a big play. Working with bloggers, working on content creators to basically drive traffic to your site without much cost. I think that's been one of those things that's been happening. It's, it's been done many times over. It's just that you know, as, as things progress and, and evolve, and you know, you find easier way to get things, and hopefully drive the cost down a bit. So exactly, um, you kind of hit it on the head right there. Evolution is survival of the fittest, right? So, you know, some people will die, some people won't. What what is that? What you're doing to make sure that he who shall not be named um, doesn't take you over, or? Well, the good news is we're part of a much bigger company now, and sure. they have as probably not as deep pockets, but they've been around for ten years. They are considered the market leader on it, and we'll continue to fight, right, in terms of what it is. Uh, but the way we're doing it is we're doing it through partnerships, collaboration. Our competitor is very, hang, you know, is is very into their brand, into the way they're doing things. Would you say you're more localized? Maybe? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's how we get to market a lot faster and quicker, and 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 when we're not trying to shove a global platform into our supplier and and, and buyer in that sense, our traveler and host. Um, but um, but we're trying to basically work with them to make sure that we Asianize them and and we provide the best solution for them. And actually, a good con um, example would be with James. Um, you mentioned yourself, um, daily deals. Like it's, it used to be so big about what five, ten years ago, and even Living Social and uh, and Sogo just hasn't been able to do quite the same. How are you um, 
What are your strategies to make sure that you make sure you survive and excel? And okay, as you rightly pointed out, so deals or daily deals uh, are uh, no longer the fat that they once were. But to be clear, we are still processing about a billion US per year. So that's, okay. that's still okay. Uh, and, and IPO'd. And, and, Congratulations, IPO'd. Oh, thanks. So, so it's still not too bad. Uh, but we are increasingly also moving away from just the deals concept. Um, in, we, because deals itself is just going O to O. But within O to O itself, there's so many verticals, so many verticals that we can help a lot of the offline merchants get online. And this is where we, uh, we see a lot of opportunities there. Um, tackling them vertical by vertical is a, really a pain. Um, every merchant in a particular industry needs to be educated. But uh, uh, so far, so good. And Hamish, obviously Alipay, they're coming into Southeast Asia. Is that, is that threatening? I mean, you have your new partnership with Braintree. That's relative. Yeah, so um, I mean, there's always threats of um, new players, and, and Alipay is hardly new now, but um, and, and obviously expanding all over the world. Um, we have a very good stable base of customers though in a lot of our countries, so, so we've got a very strong business and a strong set of merchants as well. Um, but we've started to think a bit more holistically about payments and, and the specific pain points of merchants and decided that, and, and hence the acquisition of Braintree, that we, we want to provide the, the payments sort of operating platform to the industry and, and We'll, we're less, uh, more agnostic to what payment type we integrate into that. So we're, we're adding Apple Pay, or we'll have already, and, and then Google Pay and Android, uh, and, and, and all the others that are going to come after that, um, including obviously integrating PayPal into our sort of what we call V.0 platform, uh, which enables merchants to actually just integrate once with us and have multiple payment methods available to them and whatever's relevant for their country. So. You know, yes, Alipay and other payment methods are threats to us, but at the same time, we're building a business model around this uh, payments operating platform, not just the PayPal wallet. Um, I mean, as, as this goes for everybody, as, as more competitors are coming into the industry now, is there, aside from these features that, that you have um, brought on, is there like a niche that you think you're carving out? Do you see that, like, a trend in the future, maybe carving out a demographic, or say affluent travel, or et cetera, et cetera. Is that something that you see as a way of preventing, combating all this? Maybe travel is an easy one. Travel is, is um, it, I mean, there are some local players that have done very well, um, but ultimately, I think you need to kind of scale that business. I mean, even even for Maybe us, spinning off. you know, we're going global. I mean, yeah. when we started off, it's very Asia focused, but we realized that look, um, to really compete well and to really maximize your revenue, you have to kind of go global, right? Where you're attracting European American travelers coming to Asia, right. but you're also targeting intra Asia travelers to do that. Um, but I think there are many different ways to slice and dice things in terms of uh, competing. Um, you know, payments and is one, but in, in other e-commerce type of field, I think fixing the, uh, the the pain points like logistics, it's is a it's a huge huge pain point. I think that if a company plus the fraud issues, yeah, the fraud issues and whatnot. I mean, I think those those are still not solved yet. I think right, um, I, and I think. There will be one or two probably hero companies out of Asia that will try to solve that. And I think uh, um, they'll do quite well in it, you know? I just lost my questions here somewhere. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, question for you. Where is the next Asian unicorn going to be? Where would you put your money on? And, and who's going to be the next member of the Trey Comma Club? Who do you think is the next? Asian unicorn. To, to be frank, if I knew, I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> um. Well, you have all these people to choose from. Anybody? It, it's, it's tough to gauge. I mean, there are some really, some good companies that are getting fun, well funded in the last 12 to 24 months. Right? The guys like Grab Taxi, for example, Tokopedia, Indonesia, um, and a few others. I mean, uh, th those are definitely in the right path to get there. 
but you know, it's it, it really also depends on you know how they execute it the next 12 to 25 months. It's a good thing for the ecosystem. A lot of pressure on them, I'm sure. But they've got a good set of guys and good teams. I'm sure they'll do well. I think the guys that's uh, going to succeed best, whether or not they are unicorns or not, are those that can scale in this market the fastest. Okay, um, because it's it's a it's a very big market. Yes, it is. Um, you know, it's fr very fragmented as well, and uh, internet penetration rates across the region is not uniform, right? Um, I think except for Singapore and Malaysia, the, the rest of the other countries have still less than 40% internet penetration, so that speaks volumes about the, you know, disparity and the uh, non-uniformity of this, uh, this region itself. So the guy who's able to kind of like address all of these structural differences and yet scale sure. um, in the fastest possible time in the biggest markets is going to hit home run, I would say. Okay, whether or not it's a uh, unicorn, that's a well, that's a function for the market as well as the VCs. Well, I think the only thing I'd add is that, um, those that are crystal clear on the value that they're creating as well. Um, and it's, you know, it's easy to say, hey, let's start a marketplace, but you've got to know what problem you're solving and what's important for it to be successful. And, you know, eBay actually, you know, you could say well, it was a great model to connect buyers and sellers, but at the end of the day, what we became was a, what, what, what we created was trust, actually. And trust was our value proposition and trust was the thing that made it work. And having buyer and seller protection, and, and it's the same with PayPal, having buyer and seller protection for payments. It's a trust and risk management business. It's not a payments company. And, and so you've got to be very clear on what you're solving for. I think we've run out of time, but hopefully we've painted a picture on how we're bullish with the e-commerce and the evolution of e-commerce and how much more far we have to grow. Um, I'd like to thank you all and uh, go Southeast Asia. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, panel.